Good morning, everyone. And today I am going to be talking to you about NAND and NOR only logic. Now, there are many reasons to convert an AOI circuit to NAND or NOR only logic. Now, you might be thinking, wait, what the heck? It turns out you can actually take any AOI logic circuit built out of ANDs, ORs, and inverters and convert it to use only NAND gates. A NAND gate is essentially an AND gate that is built naturally to have an inverter on its output. Same thing with a NOR gate. NOR gates are essentially an OR gate that has an inverter built into its output. Those get redrawn in this case because it is its own type of gate as a combination of the two symbols. So a NAND gate is just a NAND symbol with a circle at the end to represent the inversion, and an OR gate, or an OR gate is just an OR gate with a circle at the end to represent the inversion. Now, it turns out we can create any of our AOI gates using only our NAND or NOR gates. Let me show you how that works. Here we can we'll see how we take a NAND gate, an, a NAND gate, and rewire it to behave in the same way as an inverter. It's going to look something like that. Now, if we are going to go and we take a look at the truth table of our NAND gate, we will notice something. Here we have our two inputs A and B to the uh, uh, to this circuit. We'll build a truth table like normal. And let's take a look at what those outputs would be. So remember, a NAND gate is an AND gate with an inverter after it. So in an AND gate, 0 and 0 would create a 0 right here. However, we would invert that zero to be a one at the output. And so this would give us an F is one when we give it a zero. Remember, we're giving it one input that's getting split up to A and B. So those inputs will always match. In this case, we connected a zero to the gate. So A and B both were seen as zeros, creating this one at the output. Wired this way, we won't have these conditions here, so they aren't going to matter to us. We'll never have these two inputs not matching because we've directly connected the two inputs together. Now in this last case, we can see if we fed a 1 in here, that 1 would become A, and it would also become B. So that would be a 1 and 1 on our AND gate. 1 and 1 gives us a 1 at the output with an AND gate. Through the inverter, that gives us a 0. What we can see here is that when we take our input of a zero, the output is a one. When our input is a one, the output is a zero. This turns our NAND gate into an inverter when we wire it this way. Now, one of the convenient things that we can do is that we can take an a NAND gate wired like normal and convert it back into an AND gate by using a double inversion. Since we only have access to NAND and NOR gates, we will use an, a NAND inverter right here to invert our NAND, creating an AND gate. And this will behave exactly like an AND gate. Again, we have inverted the inverted output and this, inver this NAND gate wired as an inverter essentially cancels out that other inverter, making it the equivalent of an AND gate. Now, our NOR gates will look a little funnier, but this is going to actually make the, our, our OR is going to look a little funny, but it's actually going to behave the same way. I'm not going to take the time to go through and prove this to you with the truth table right now, but I promise available in your PowerPoints on our assignments, or if you just want to think it through yourself, you'll see that if we take, and by think it through, I mean build some truth tables, 
look at what this would be. If we take two inverters right here, and we wire up three NAND gates like this, we are going to get the exact same truth table that we would get out of an OR. And so that's going to be our equivalent right there. Now down here, if we want to go in and do the same kind of conversion, we're actually going to see that making an OR gate into an inverter behaves in the same way. We're going to take the two inputs, wire them together, and excuse my poorly drawn OR gates, I've always drawn them a bit poorly. Now, we can again prove this by looking at the truth table. Here's A, here's B, here's our output F. Now remember, our NOR gate is an OR gate with an inverter after it. What that's going to mean for us is 0 or 0, right, is 0, inverted is a 1. 0 or 1, right, is 1, inverted gives us a 0. 1 or 0 is 1, inverted gives us a 0. Now again, these cases will not happen because our inputs will always match. Here, if both of our inputs are a 1, meaning you fed a 1 into this gate, 1 and w 1 or 1 is 1, right? Inverted becomes a 0. And we can see that our input overall to this circuit, right, gets split up between A and B. So if we input a 0, it outputs a 1. If we input a 1, it outputs a 0. They're made by making this a true inverter. We'll use that same principle we used with the NAND gate of we're going to build an OR gate, we'll take a NOR gate and we'll wire an inverter up onto the end of it. A NOR gate inverted will remove the, the inverter right here with, through the double inversion and just give us an OR gate again. The AND gate is going to follow the same principle that the OR gate did back in NAND only logic. There is a pattern to this here, and so I hope it'll help you remember it. If not, these conversions are always available in an infographic on the wall. Now, if I don't make one shortly, one of you will. It's one of the ways you can assess your knowledge of Unit 2.2 make a nice infographic showing all of these conversions for us along with truth tables explaining how, that the truth that the in, the conversion is the same output that would be a great way to demonstrate your understanding for this unit and is one of my assessment options for you now we have our equivalents here and once we know how to take an AND gate and make it out of NANDs or an OR gate and make it out of NANDs or an inverter and make it out of a NAND we can go down and take an AOI logic circuit with an inverters, AND gates, and OR gates, and we can convert that into NAND-only logic. The way we'll do that is we will start out the same way with our inputs, A, B, and C. Again, these represent switches with wires coming from them. First thing we'll do is I see here that I have an inverter. That means <clears throat> I will have to take it, that C signal and I will invert it with my NAND based inverter symbol. Now that is going to feed into this AND gate right here, which I will replace with the NOR only version of a NAND gate. And we'll see, or the NAND only version of an AND gate. Sorry, there's a lot of NANDs and NORs to say in a video like this. And so I see here I had C not coming in right there. So there's C not. Here's C inverted, that becomes C not. And the other thing coming into that was B, so I'm going to need to bring B in right here. Now originally that created C not B. And right here, here's C not, then here's B coming in, and then that's C not B coming out. 
on the bottom here, I would have C and A also coming through a NAND gate. Here's A, here's C, we're going to get A and C, and then I will have to pass that through an inverter to make it into a NAND gate. Excuse me, these would be completed right here. Now the last thing I'm going to need to do is OR them together to get my OR gate. It's going to look something like that. So I'll build my two NAND inverters that start my OR gate. Connect them together with that last NAND gate to build my OR gate. You'll see here's my OR equivalent in NANDs. And I'll go in build it like that. Now I'll get my output to be C not B or A C. Now, one thing you can do, right, is redraw that circuit and reduce the NAND only circuit by removing double inversions. What I mean by that is if we go back and we look right here, we'll see that this is an inverter right here, and this is an inverter right here. We see that repeated down here. If we want to redraw our circuit, we'll take A, B, and C, and I still have my C naught that I need right here. Now if I'm looking at it, I'll notice I can eliminate these two gates because they were double inversions. Double inversions can go away. Even though these were part of making this into an OR, once we've done all of our conversions, anything that looks like an inverter is an inverter. And so once our, inver our, our conversions are complete, these inverters that were part of originally a NAND gate, or an AND gate and an OR gate, cancel each other out, saving us gates. So I'll be able to simplify my circuit through this principle. Here I have one of my NAND gates redrawn. You can see I would need to hook B up to that gate. I go back over here. I'm going to just keep redrawing, working left to right, all the way up to where my cancellations are. I have A and I have C right here. So I'll draw a NAND gate with A and C. Now I can leave out both of these gates in each of these cases, so I'm cutting four total gates. And all I need to draw then, when I come back over here, is one more NAND gate. There we go. This is the equivalent. Now one thing I want to point out to you. I have one, two, three, four gates in my NAND converted version of this once it's reduced. In my original circuit I have one, two, three, four gates. So I have the same number of gates. However, in my original circuit I used one chip, two chips, three chips because I need a chip for each different kind of gate. Each AND gate hosts a chip hosts four, ga uh, four gates. Or, ch or gate chips host four gates, or at least the ones that we use in class do. And our inverters host six gates. So over here, since a NAND gate chip hosts four gates, this is only one chip instead of the three chips that we used for our other circuit this is a lot simpler. It's also a lot faster because one thing that is true about NAND and NOR conversions is that on silicon they're faster and smaller to build. Right? We're only using one gate type which is kind of nice. Economies of scale matter and so using only one gate can make things che uh, cheaper as well. Let's go ahead and do our NOR only conversion. 
here's A, here's B, here's C, our inputs to this circuit. Right here, we are going to do our conversion of this inverter into a NOR gate. The inverters are kind of nice because they look the same whether you're doing a NAND conversion or a NOR conversion. Then if we're going to go and we're going to build our AND gate out of OR gates, we will need to invert that as part of building our OR gate. Because making an OR gate out of NORs involves using two NORs wireless inverters connected to a third NOR. Sorry, that's building an AND, an AND gate out of NORs. So right here we'll see we have C. C was inverted into C0. We now need to bring B in here. So we're going to bring B in through there. And the output of this is going to be B C naught. That's what this gate this originally produced. We had C naught right there. Here we have B C naught. And here we have A C right there. So we're going to need to create A and C. In order to do A and C, we'll need to create another AND gate out of NOR gates. Now we can wire that up to A and C, producing the output A, C. Last thing we need to do is build our inverter. The way we, or not our inverter, we need to build our OR gate. And again, the way we build OR gates is just by taking a NOR gate and inverting that NOR gate. Now, we can follow the same principle here and look for any double inversions that might occur. Now, un NOR gates don't always create the same number of reductions, and you'll see right here, I'm really only seeing one reduction in my chain of gates. This is not going to allow me to reduce this quite as much as with the NAND only circuit. And you can see I have a typo in my note sheet for you right here. This should say, reduce the NOR only circuit from above removing any double inversions. That's the only double inversion I'm really seeing right here. And so we can take a line from C into this NOR gate. Then we will invert B. And connect that in. Down here A and C will remain as normal. We'll build an AND gate out of NOR gates by using those inverters, connecting them together, and then we will build A, C right down there, and then at the very end we can still build our NOR gate to conclude this. So as you can see, converting this to a NOR only circuit didn't reduce the number of gates that we used all that much. However, if we think of this from a chipwise perspective, our original AOI circuit, again, used one, two, three total chips, right? We used one inverter chip, one AND gate chip, and one OR gate chip. Down here, there are four NOR gates on each chip, so we used one NOR gate chip, two NOR gate chips. More gates, fewer chips. Keep in mind, there's also a speed benefit to using OR gates. A signal would have has to have passed through one, two, three, four NOR gates versus passing through one, two, three AOI logic gates. However, NOR gates are significantly faster, so this signal likely happens to pass through this circuit faster than this circuit. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful, and maybe again, you watched me at 2x speed, so you got through your notes faster than the 20 minutes that it took me to talk to you about this. I hope you have a re great rest of the day, and good luck practicing your NAND and NOR only logic assignments.